They call him Jesus. He came to love. He'll ever give. He lived and died. To buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior Cause he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future, and life is worth. I'm going to do my Bible before I do that uh, doll shirt because I want to get it done. So I'll make sure that it's done. and I, So I don't have to worry about it. I may end up still yet having time to get busy on that quilt. I don't know. We'll have to see. we got Lexi here, as you can tell. Yeah. And I've got to wash my dishes. So I may do the Bible and then do my dishes and then do the shirt. But I think I've got enough to catch up to, I can put the first video up of the quilt. Yeah, she's a pretty girl. Okay. And the Lord said unto Moses, I'm on number seven. See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron, thy brother, shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, my great judgment. Now I want you to pay attention here. <clears throat> From the looks of it, God's going to fix it so the armies is uh, <clears throat> comes out of Egypt. I mean, I'm not talking about just the people of um, of uh, um, Goshen. I'm talking about his armies also out of Egypt. So this is a two-faced um, two-faced uh, uh, verse here. Number five. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them. So did they. And Moses was fourscore years old and Aaron fourscore and three years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. So Aaron is older than Moses by three years. Number eight. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, When <clears throat> Pharaoh shall speak it to you, saying, Show a miracle for you. Show a miracle for you. Then that thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in to Pharaoh, and they did so. And the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down the rod before Pharaoh, and, became, <clears throat> and before his servants, and it became a serpent. And Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hardened not unto them, hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. What are you doing over here? You're taking me and bothering me. Go on and go play. Go on. 
Number 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refused to let the people go. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river bank against he came, and the rod which was turned into a serpent shalt thou take in thy hand. And thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Thus saith the Lord, In this that thou uh, see, thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in my hand upon the waters which were in the river, and they shall turn to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying unto Aaron, Take the, thy rod and stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, upon their ponds, and upon all the pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that threw in the river in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river turned into blood. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians of Egypt <clears throat> did so with their enchantments, and, Mo and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, Neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went to his house. Neither did he set his heart to this also. So in other words, they did it too. So he wasn't going to pay no attention to it. And all the Egyptians dug around about the river for water to drink, for they could not drink the water of the river. <clears throat> and seven days were fulfilled after the Lord had smitten the river. So, it stayed like that for seven days. Alright, now we're on number eight. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, <clears throat> Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, Behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thy house, and to the bedchambers, and upon thy bed, and into thy house of thy servants, and upon the people, and to thy, thy ovens, and unto the kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee, and upon thy people, and upon thy servants." And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying unto Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand with the rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and, and cause frogs to come upon the land of the Egyptians. And Aaron stretched out his hands over the waters of, the Egy of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments, and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. So they did the same thing. And Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron, and said, Entreat the Lord, that he may take away the frogs from me, and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may go sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when shall entreat for thee and for thy servants and for the people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy house that they may remain in the river only. And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, 
be, be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from thee, and from thy house, and from thy servants, and from thy people. They shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh, and Moses cried unto the Lord, Behold, uh, of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the, the Lord did according to the words of Moses. And the frogs died out of the house, and out of the village, and out of the field. And they gathered them together upon a heap, and the land stank. Oh, gosh, yeah, all them dead frogs. Ugh. But when, when Pharaoh saw that there was a respite, he hardened his heart, and hearkened not unto them, as the Lord ha, uh, had said. 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lost throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beasts, and all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were, were lice upon man and upon beast. They couldn't do what God done made lice. <laughs> yeah, now you got it. God's showing you those things you can't do. 19. And the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and the hardness not unto them as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh. What are you got? What? Get out of the garbage. And lo, he cometh forth to the water. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if thou wilt not, let my people go. Behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and upon thy house. Upon the house of the Egyptians shall be fell a swarm of flies, and also the ground thereon they are. And I will serve, serve in that day, the land of Goshen. So he's not going to put them in Goshen. Um, <clears throat> in which my people dwell. That no swarm of flies shall be there. To the end thou mayest know that I am the Lord. And in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. So he's going to make it flies everywhere in the land of Egypt except for where the Goshen, where God's people are. 24 And the Lord did so. And there came a gr grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and to his servant's house and to the land of Egypt. The land was corrupt by reason of the swarm of flies. And Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go, you sacrifice to you to your God in the land. <clears throat> and Moses said, It is not meant so to do. For we shall sacrifice the um, abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and I will not stone us. Alright, I'll be back. Okay, that was Rick. He calls me every day on his break. So that was him. Alright, I'm going to read this last one over, which is 26. And Moses said, It is not meant to do so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and will they not stone us? We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us. And Moses said, I will let you go that ye may sacrifice to the Lord 
your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away and treat for me. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarm of flies may depart from Pharaoh and from his servants and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitful any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and intrigued the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Mo Moses. And he removed the swarm of flies from Pharaoh and from his servants and from his people will remain not one. And Pharaoh hardened, hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would let the people go. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to read 9. And the Lord said unto Pharaoh, Go unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go, and wilt hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field and upon the horses also, and the asses upon the camels, and the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous, grievous moram, moraine, and the Lord shall sever between the cattle of the Israel and the cattle of Egypt, <clears throat> and there shall nothing die of all that is in the children of Israel. So he's just going to do it on the Egyptians. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the, on the morrow. And the cattle of Egypt died. But of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites died. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And the Lord said to Moses and upon Aaron, Take you a handful of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it towards heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. And it shall become a small dust in the land of Egypt, and there shall be a bull breaking forth with bands upon men and upon beasts throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it upward towards heaven, and it became a bull breaking forth with bands upon man and upon beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the bulls, for the bulls was upon the magicians and upon all of Egypt. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hardened not unto them, as the Lord has spoken to Moses. 13. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that I may that they may serve me. For I will at this time send my plague upon the heart, and upon thy servant, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like, in, like unto me in the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand, that I might smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou, thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in every deed for this cause I have raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Now that is, I am that I am. 17. As yet exalted through thyself among thy, my people, that thou wilt not let, let them go, behold, tomorrow, about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hell, which has not seen been in Egypt since the foundation thereof until now. Send therefore now, and gather thy cattle and all that thou hast in the field, for upon every man 
and beasts which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home and hell shall come down upon them and they shall die now i want to explain to this um just in case you all don't know this didn't come on day after day after day it was a time span in between each time a curse was brought upon the land so if you think it's okay this one happened and this one happened this no uh, -uh. It, there was in between time that's how come they got more cattle and everything they had time to get things back up to par and that's how come he could harden his heart more because uh, the, of the time span. All right, I'm on 20. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the house. And he that regard not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thy hand towards heaven, that there may be hell in all the land of Egypt, upon, upon man, upon beast, upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod towards heaven. And the Lord sent thunder and hell and fire ran among the ground. And the Lord raised the hell upon the land of Egypt. So, hell was rained down. I mean, it's like, when, when it hit the ground, it was like fire. All right, 24. And there was hell, and fire mingled with hell. Every grievous, such as there was none like it in the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hell smoked throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hell smote every herb of the field, and broke every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, were no hell. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron, and said unto them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous, and, and I and the people are wicked. Entreat the Lord, for it is enough that there be no more mighty thundering in hell, and I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hell, that thou mayest know that the earth is the Lord's. See, God's having to prove that this earth belongs to him, and he's going to have to do it again, because Satan is out there now. There is more witchcraft going on right now than I would even want to take a, take a look at, okay? Uh, 30, but as for thee and thy servants, I know that ye will not yet fear the Lord God, and the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was boiled. But the wheat and the rice were not smitten, for they were not grown up. And Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh, and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord. And the thunder and hell ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hell and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more and hardened his heart, he and his servants. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord has spoken by Moses. All right, we're going to do 10 when we come back tomorrow. So I'm going to go get this ready for you, and I will see you next video this is how to donate to my paypal you come down here to poor man sewing and you mash on poor man sewing then you go over here to about you mash on about and right here is to donate to poor man sewing 